Welcome to Velocity Addiction. I'm Rick. This is an FG530 four-wheel drive sport line. It's a one-fifth scale car. One of the things I've been seeing out on the internet is there's not a whole, much, whole lot of information on how to remove the engine from this car. So I figured I'd make a little video for you. Um, right now, I have the throttle linkage removed. And we're going to remove the brake linkage off the motor. Um, there's one screw down in here. I'm not sure if it's on camera or not. Um, that you have to remove. And then there's four on the bottom. And I have the four on the bottom are, are loosened up. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I recommend you do is you keep the wheels on the left side of the car. Because it will stand on its own. Um, remove these four screws that are loose right here. And that is the screws to the motor mounts. And it should come right out. We're going to find out real quick here. As soon as I loosen this brake linkage and take that off. Uh, how do we want to do that? I think might want to take that off the servo side. Looks like it might be a little easier. Sorry for the gloves, it's very cold out here. Hopefully this is all staying in frame on the camera. All right, that's off. And because I have gloves on, I've got to use the pliers. Put that in our tray over there. And so now we can just pull this straight out without changing the adjustment on the brake. It's a brand new car. Um, we're putting a kill switch in it, but got to remove the motor in order to get the kill switch in it, which means this zip tie has to come off. Breather line. And then we have the fuel lines. I think we're going to take them off the tank side. Because it might be a little easier to get off. Oh. All right, it's off. That's off. Okay, a few lines are off. Linkages are off. We should be able to take the motor off now. Spin that up to the front. Ah, exhaust. You can see how the exhaust comes off. And it looks like it's just 
going through the zip ties. So one of the things I did find out is the screws on the car are T20 Torx. They're not Allen heads. So in order to remove any of the screws in the chassis or here, you need a T20 Torx. So I think we're going to try and keep the pipe on the motor instead of monkeying around with that so much. Um, maybe we're going to have to cut those zip ties, I think. I was trying to avoid that. But I think we're going to have to cut them and just replace them. It's a little easier if you have a bigger set of pliers or uh, cutters, like a pair of diagonal cutters. These flush cutters aren't really made for something that big, but they work in a pinch. All right, so if muffler's free, we could put that screw back in the mount. As soon as we find what we did with it. Uh, the reason why there's so many extensions on this is because that one screw that's down in the transmission that had to come out. All right. So let's see if we can do this with some sort of grease. She went loose. What are we missing? Ah, that screw right there. Which is hopefully going to come out. Is it a Torx? the old goggles on and see it looks like it's a Torx yeah. wish I had a little bit longer extension But, oh, excuse me. Let's see if we have a longer quarter inch extension.
All right, so just had to remove that one screw and motor came loose. So now I've taken out the two screws on the top. There's two screws here and then there's two nuts here. This is, these are the two main reasons why you have to remove the motor from the car in order to do the kill switch on it because they're down sunken down below the, the bend in the chassis plate, which means you can't get to them with a nut driver or a wrench. The one is actually going through this hole here, so you can't even get to it. Um, but now we got the motor out. We are going to pull this cover off and then we have a mod fist scale kill switch kit right here that is going to be going into the motor. Uh, so let's go ahead and take those two nuts off and we should be able to remove the front cover then at that point which I believe that the same size nope they're 10 millimeter And you may be wondering why I'm using the power driver. I have nerve damage in my left arm, so I have very little um, strength in my left arm. And hold, holding a or twisting a screwdriver is the one motion that really sets my arm off. So, we are. that Oop. so that goes there you gotta track down where that nut went so now this cover should just pull off and there is your flywheel and I'm hoping I can pull off getting this back one off and back on without pulling the coil. Because I really don't want to have to reset the gap on the coil. So, let's see. This should just slide out of the cover. And we'll see if we can get down in there. Don't know if you're seeing this. You're probably not. All right, black one's off. If you're not seeing this, I'm going to edit this out. Ah, kill switch up.
this. Yep. I'm gassy. So this has to go up here. <laughs> but it can't go that way. Because of the carb isolator. All right, let's try this a different way. Try to feed it this way. I have a funny feeling we're going to have to pull this coil. <clears throat> Just to ensure that we have it on the coil properly. Which I don't think it's going on properly. Because we don't want this to not work. Yeah, let's pull the coil. And we'll have to reset the gap. Probably not going to be done today. Three, it's easier to get out. that just to put that one wire on it kind of sucks because now the motor is not gonna be the ignition's not gonna be gapped right and there goes the spacers which just fell down inside the engine So, these have to go back on, spacer has to go back on, and start these by hand. 
don't lose the spacers. All right, so they always say a business card. Do we have a business card? That's about the width of a business card. We're going to move these up. And we're going to curve this around the flywheel. This is just to preliminarily get this back together. We will go through and with a feeler gauge set the time set the ignition again. Um, gonna go to fourteen. good okay so our kill switch is in on the motor side so we can put the front cover back on it and we need to set this up Hands are cold, so they're not working right now. There we go. All right. So that switch is in. Stand this up. See if everything lines up. These nuts back on. So we're just going to double check our wiring not hitting. back up
back apart. This back apart. Hands are really cold at this point. Really should be putting the gloves back on, but I want to get this done. These top two screws are Phillips head screws, and usually on a Zenoa motor, they're Phillips head all the way around. Alright, so that's done. Need to tighten those up. Okay, motor is ready to go back in. This needs to go back here. 